this week on Marae, Breaking the Silence. We catch up with Hone Harawira. Then, sheer magic. Make some really good coin. We buy houses and farms and travel the world and, and have a good time. And it's a really good lifestyle. And a diet from our past. I can eat as much as I want, when I want, wherever I want, as long as it's in the tupuna kai frame and I don't put on any weight. In a word, he's consistent. Hone Harawira has protested on the streets and inside Parliament. He was arrested as a young man and years later as a sitting MP, but since the election he's been quiet. He's just arrived home from Ahui in South Africa, so soon I'll be catching up with the Mana Movement leader. But first, here's a peek at his colourful political past. Doing things the polite way gets you ignored. That's always been the situation. We want people to sit up and take notice, kick them in the ass, basically. I can remember when I was a young, hot head, never listened to my kaumata swear them as they got in my way. Hone Harawira's path in politics was neither quiet or simple. I just wish some of the brothers had the balls to do something. A champion of Māori sovereignty, it wasn't surprising that he joined Tariana Turi as Māori Party, entering Parliament as the member for Te Tai Tukero in 2005. I have hope for the next generation where I hear our young people at Manu Kōrero say that if Hone Harawira can get there, then I can get there too. But for his parliamentary colleagues, Hone wasn't an easy man to rein in. John Howard is a racist bastard. We don't attack people, we attack policies. I, I've apologised to the Māori Party, but I certainly won't be apologising to John Howard. This is what he wrote on his Facebook page. It looks like these dickheads only have expulsion on their mind. I didn't call my fellow MPs dickheads. In three parliamentary terms, he actively pushed for smoke-free legislation, the retention of state housing, and introduced his own Feed the Kids bill. And his popularity within Te Tai Tukero remains solid. People in the land of milk and honey are starving. Somebody's got to change that. It's not going to be national, and it sure don't look like it's going to be Labour. Until this year, when he chose an unpredictable alliance, once again flying in the face of convention, ultimately conceding his seat to Labour's Calvin Davis, leaving Parliament with his most loyal supporter and wife at his side, yes. and vowing to return in 2017. So we have the man himself with us this morning, Dena Kwe Morena. Thanks for joining us. Um, interesting watching your face as we yeah, watch yeah. those pictures play out. What, what did you make of them? Yeah, I, you don't even think about things like that. Eh? It's just stages in your life that bring you to where you are. And uh, are you proud of it when you look at those pictures? Do you think? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, you don't, you don't go through life by being flat. And well, a lot of people do flat and normal, but it's not my style. But like. Um, the last election it was a punt, didn't come off, so now I'm relaxing on the beaches of the Taitokero and enjoying it. Are you? Are you just relaxing? No, I have been. It's been great, actually. I've had a um, couple of months off. I went to the went to the Ngapui hearings last week, which was mm. bloody awesome, and across to South Africa the week before. What so was in South Africa? Was a was an international conference about civil societies and about how things like the G well, in our case, the GCSB, the SIS the anti-terrorism laws, et cetera, et cetera, are squeezing citizens into a place where we're scared to be free. And uh, it's about trying to expand that. So, uh, you know, the South African experience, the experience in other parts of Africa, in, in the United States, everywhere, it was, it was a discussion of all those Are you still in touch with Kim.com? Actually, I texted him. Uh, I might try and catch up with him on the way home. Did you? What did you text to him? Just... Let him know I'm in Auckland and on the way home. If he's got time, we'll have a catch up. What will we catch up about? Oh, just how he is. Uh, since he's court case, what he's got planned for next year. Let him know what I'm doing. Um, well, yeah. if, will you do something with him again down track, do you think? Well, there's, there's a whole lot of things that uh, come into play there, whether or not he's still going to be here, uh, whether or not he's going to be in a position to do anything. But one thing I'll say about Kim.com, he knows more about the internet than anybody I've ever met. He's an engaging personality. Young people get it when he talks to them. 
and I want to try and get our young people connected to the internet. Yet he failed to engage, didn't he? By his own oh, admission, you know, no, sure, he failed sure, to engage. Sure. In, so, I mean, is he really that potent a force, that somebody that you should be engaging with? When you say failed to engage, in terms of engaging with rangatahi, yeah. who, who believe in the internet? Well, with voters. Rangatahi who believe in the internet. Um, I've yet to meet a person who engages with rangatahi better than him. So, in terms of voters, that clearly didn't work. But so um, they, I'm, they talk, I'm talking about kids at school. You know, our kids who are looking for new opportunities. The internet is the new highway to the world. Eh? And so many of our kids have been denied that. So I want to try, in the Taitukero at least, try to make that happen. And if we can, great. If we can't, well, I'll find another way. Will it be under the Mana Movement banner? If it does, it'll be under the Mana Movement banner, absolutely. What state is the, is the movement in at the moment, would you say? Well, we just had a planning week on the weekend... Um, Oh, it's amazing. We've got 70 people turned up from all around the country. People are really keen. Uh, they really want to go hard for uh, 2017. But right now, it's about identifying key dates, key activities, and being involved in things like community activities wherever we are so that mana maintains its relevance to the people who matter most to us. Te pani me te rawa kore. You, you said in, the, um, in our piece this morning, if, <laughs> if Hone Harawera can get there, I can too. Do you want young people to aspire to a career in, in politics? I say that to young people when I go and talk to them. I say, look, what you need to know is I've been up to court on more than 30 charges in my life and I'm an MP. And they'll go, oh. And I say, what that really means to you is one day you could be Prime Minister. If I can do it with what I've been through, you can do far better than me. So it's, it's just a way of saying to them, don't ever let anybody tell you you're not good enough to be anything that you might possibly want to be. So that's what it's all about. Well, speaking of rangatahi, let's have a look at some, some footage. Earlier today, two voyaging waka from the Pacific oh, yeah. were welcome to Okahu yeah, Bay yeah. in Auckland before setting off again uh, around the world. Your daughter is on one of those waka, I understand. Uh, she was supposed to be on one of them, but she headed back up home anyway. She's gone paddling uh, on a waka, um, I think, up Taputuputu. But she's quite involved in... Oh, yes, she is. Yes, she yeah. is. And... Um, I'm surprised not down here on one of those. It wasn't, I didn't know that she was up home until she let me know. I've okay. got a couple of good mates on there from, from Hawaii. So. Yeah. And this is a wonderful way to engage with oh. our rangatahi, isn't it? Uh, absolutely it is. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can only get so many people on it at, at any one time. But um, it's, it's taking us back to who we are. It's connecting us with all of our relations all around the Pacific. It's saying to us that we can be more than what people think we are. You know, for a lot of our, our, our families, our young people in particular, stuck in really poor conditions, really tough communities, they need to be challenged to think outside themselves. The internet is one way, those waka, that's another way. It's a, it's a beautiful and wonderful way. I've yeah. spent a bit of time with Heck Busby and what he's doing up yeah, there. Sure. Just, yeah, sure. Just amazing. I, I'm, I mean, one of the things I'm curious about with you is... And with, I guess, with Tariana and Peter, yeah. I still have this residual curiosity when I see you guys in Parliament yeah. and think, do they miss their days of, of activism? Uh, one of the things, uh, I've said it on this programme, I've said it on every programme, even during when I was an MP, was I am an activist and I always will be. I'm currently employed as a politician. But my activism means more to me than parliamentary politics and always will. Because that's the stuff that, that feeds me. I mean, I use Parliament as a platform to, to actively push for the things that I thought were important in terms of our health, smoking. In terms of poverty, feed the kids. And so if, I, if I'd stayed there, my next issue would have been... or out of Parliament? Uh, well, you can achieve more on the ground in the communities where you work uh, and you can achieve more at a national level in Parliament because you have the opportunity to, to talk about issues, to, to go to places and to speak to people you might not otherwise have the opportunity to do. Do you, I mean, we've got Waitangi Day coming up in, in February, yeah, yeah. of course, and there's such a push uh, in recent years for it to be seen as a day of, of celebration. Is that how we should view Waitangi Day, in your view? I think Waitangi Day this year is probably going to be very important to Ngāpuhi, um, and I'll probably be wanting to focus on the whole Ngāpuhi side of things, given that uh, we've had the tribunal ruling that Ngāpuhi never ceded their sovereignty, given that uh, the tribunal is currently going through the two Horonuku mandate and, uh, and the, dis you know, the discussions between, between two Horonuku and Kotahitanga. What, what's the answer to that, do you think? Uh, I still believe the answer to that is uh, both parties realising two things. One, without a hapu, we are nothing. And two, Ngapuhi is too important as an overall uh, entity to, to, to be ignored. So we have to bring both, 
Right. Okay, so Both the two Horonuku and uh, the Hapu Ngati Hine, yeah. they, they should have their own say, separate they, say. No, not separate say. No, 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 we've got to come together. We have to come together because Ngapuhi is only as strong as its Hapu are strong. And when the Hapu are strong and connected and united, it will be unstoppable. Tell me what you feel about um, how Calvin Davis has been going. Haven't really noticed. <laughs> oh, no offence to Calvin, I can't say that I've... I've noticed anything in particular that Calvin's done. I haven't been taking that much notice of Parliament, tell you the truth. I really have been enjoying the break. I've been doing a bit of, uh, bit of waka ama, hanging out at my kura, working on developing a couple of projects for up home, one with the local iwi and one with uh, uh, the local community in Kaitai. So I'm just focusing on home stuff because if you watch too much of that stuff, it can start making you a bit crazy. We do have to wrap in a moment, but very quickly, will we see you back in 2017? Well, that's certainly looking like it's the push I'm getting from everywhere, so, yeah. In fact, I was in Abu Dhabi on my way home from South Africa. A Pakeha couple in Abu Dhabi came up to me and said, whatever happens, we don't agree with you, but we sincerely hope that you stand again in 2017. So, it's international. Very good. Thanks for your time this morning. Well, 58 million sheep get a hair cut or two in this country every year. They're most likely getting the chop from Māori who make up half of the workforce in the $750 million wool industry. And this week, reporter Yvonne Tahana met a gun shearer on the way to achieving touch wool. Yes, I said that. One of his dreams early next year. I just want to make you sweat. This shearer doesn't mind playing the goat, even if he's gearing up for a crack at the world record. The record that's there now is uh, 721, and um, I've got nine hours to share 722. A lot of it's composure. You want to be fast and clean. He'll need to clip at a rate of one sheep every 45 seconds. Let's just take a moment to appreciate how fast he'll have to move. Well, there's only four other people that have done it. Oh, you make it look good, Steve. Competitive sharing's changing the industry, where once it was a case of... Drink hard, cheer hard. Now, guys like Stacey are committing to elite programs. CrossFit consists of uh, aerobic exercise, resistant training, cardio work, all of that rolled into one, ex one workout. And um, pretty much, as you can see with the shearers at the back, that's pretty much what we're doing all day. You, you know, you're, you're on your tippy toes, you're using your arms, you're using your back, your legs, and, and it's definitely a cardio workout, especially when it gets really hot. That pushes you to the boundaries. You're, sometimes you're spewing up at the end. Yeah. Surfing's also part of the training, although not this day. As you can see, the southerly's up. Stacy comes from a shearing whānau. His sister's a world champion and he grew up in wool sheds. My old man was a shearer and I always used to go to work with him and just muck around in the sheds with him and you know, be out there healing or something while he's working and he'd just tell us what time to come back and we'd come back with a sack full of eels. It's a job which has taken him all over the show. So I live in Australia now, over in Bathurst, um, mainly because there's more work over there and we get paid a lot more. I've been to Italy once and um, yeah, that was fun, they got a lot of homemade red wine there and, and uh, sheep cheese which isn't very nice. Went to Scotland a couple of times, that was pretty much eight weeks flat out, been over to England. 95% of the shearers are professional these days and we make some really good coin, we buy houses and farms and travel the world and, and have a good time. And, it's a really good lifestyle. I think a lot of young people should should have a go at it. Why do you share? I mean, do you love it? Or what, what is it about sharing that keeps you going? It's 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 work in progress. Like you're you're always a learner. It's a team environment, and I really like that. When everything works together all day, you know, and all week, all month, it's brilliant. Still, there are some who just shouldn't be trusted with the clippers. So, Yvonne, yep. uh, when you're holding the handpiece, you want your thumb out here so you've got more control. And then you run your blow from A to B. Yep, okay. You're cutting the farmer's profits in half. Oh, yeah, true. They're all gone. <laughs> Stacey's record mob will look something like this. Will he get them through the gate? He reckons he will. 7.22. It's on. January 22nd. 
Ah, uh, right. And then six years on, I was right. It's time to talk now. Yeah. Go on, go on. Joining me now is our political commentator, Willie Jackson. He never stops talking, so now's your chance. Um, we had Horney on this morning. Yes. It was good to see him. Looking great, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And did anything strike you from that discussion? It, it seems that he's very relaxed and yeah. he's all set and I think he knows where he's going. Yeah. He's a very determined character. I was in the north last night in Kitty Kitty and, and in Pai here, and there's still a lot of support for him. I mean, up this, there. this enforced break that he's on yeah. uh, might actually prove to be a good thing for him. Well, it'd be good for him and his wife and his father. So yeah. good luck to him. You know, Winston did the same thing. Yep. Winston, three years out, came back a, a better man. Well, I don't know if he's a better man. I'll find out tomorrow night in New Plymouth. <laughs> I have a big debate with him over Māori seats. But certainly more determined, eh? Uh, yeah. I, I have to say, in terms of the year, for me, that's one of the big disappointments, to see him leave Parliament like that. And, uh, well, two things, the, him, him leave Parliament and also the Māori Party down to one seat. Mm. It's not what we fought for many years ago. Well, not that long ago, actually. Ten years ago, we all went on a hikoi and uh, we wanted a Māori party and we wanted a united Māori voice. So seeing Hone Harawe to leave Parliament and the Māori party with one seat, one electorate seat, not good yeah. for Māori politically. Yeah, yeah. And he's not ruling out working with Kim.com again. Uh, what do yeah, you think well, of that? Yeah, well, I think that, that, that's interesting. I, it's just a shame they didn't make it happen because they could have made it happen, but it was the dumbest... How could know, they have made it happen? Well, the, well, you know, four or five weeks out from the election, they were polling 4%, and then anything that went, could go wrong went wrong. Mm. Georgina Byer, Pam Corkery, you know, everything, and... Uh, you know, Hone having a car crash, everything went wrong. Um, I think going forward for him, it's probably not advisable for him to, to work with dot-com again politically. Uh, but but relationship-wise, I understand that, because the guy's got so, so resonates with rangatahi. But, you know, I think Māori as a nation, we need to look at this last year, um, you know, to go back to Labour. Don't get me wrong, there's some good people in Labour, but it's just a dramatic return, you know. And uh, if there was a Māori politician of the year, you'd have to say Calvin Davis, mm. because he won the uh, he he took the man out in the north. Certainly got a lot of help, <laughs> from, but he, but he, good on Calvin. He yeah. he fought well, but you know. Um, now Labor's got six of the seven seats. They better not let us down. They got they got an opportunity that they didn't. What's their opportunity? They didn't, what can they do with deserve. that? Well, they can advocate strongly for us. They can advocate over kaupapa like Tino Rangatiratanga when Finlayson throws that kaupapa out. They can uh, uh, they can advocate on that silly language strategy that the Māori Party are rolling out. Dopey strategy. That has uh, not been well thought out. You know, they can. Adv I'm sure they'll advocate against that, against that. We need our practitioners leading that, that real strategy. They can be strong voices for Māori. This is their chance. But they need, at the end of the day, they need Andrew Little to be strong for and them, he's don't going, they? He's made a, hasn't he made a good start? Made a great start. Made you a know? great start. What do you think he's going to do in the next three years, though? Um, I think that he's going to get better and better. I mean, in terms of kaupapa Māori, he supports Māori having their own seats. He's from New Plymouth, so that's great. You, know, you don't get that from mainstream parties. So I think he's a good look, he's a good opportunity. Um, he's, he's promoted the Māori there. Māori have a, a real... So Māori and Labour have an opportunity, I hope they do well. The Māori and the Māori Party and mana should come together and have a quarter. I had a talk with Marama Fox today. And, and what I'll, did she say? She, she agrees. She agrees? She, she was, so we'll have a... What, what would that mean for her, do you think? <laughs> might mean that she might win a seat. Because, you know, the reality is if you have one voice, one person, whether it's a Marama Fox, like Hone Harawira, if he's the only Māori candidate in the North, he wins. But do you think that she is actu actually interested in the idea of being uh, mana Māori? Yeah, Māori well, 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 if you can't come together, come to an arrangement because it would suit a marama if she was the only voice down there or, or, um, or the other candidate who, who was uh, Te Hamua, who was the other candidate. We need one voice. We shouldn't give up on the Māori voice because in the past we know a Māori party has been very effective. We know Tūdia and Sharples have been two excellent politicians and Harawera one of the best voices and advocates we've had for Māori. Well, I live know, speaking, in hope we're going to come together. Speaking of that, I mean, we do have to wrap, but very quickly, I mean, do you think the art of activism is... is well, dying out. We just don't see the, no, the well, Hone Harawetas anymore out there, do we? Or the, yeah, the well, you, you might see a rejuvenation now, a, re a return from Mr Harawetta, because it'll be an exciting Waitangi day now, knowing that Hone's not in Parliament. I mean, what's he going to get up to this well, Waitangi could, day? Well, yeah, no, it's right. going to be fascinating to watch. No, I think that he'll always be an activist, but one thing with him, he's a responsible one. And, uh, you know, well done to him. I just want to say well done to him for his great mahi for our people. And uh, hopefully he will return. 
um, uh, in 2017. And that's where we have to leave, and hopefully we'll return to yeah. next year. Well, hopefully, that's yeah. time will tell. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> yeah. or we'll be sleeping in on Sundays. <laughs> that's right. Kia ora. you have a good Christmas. Yeah, you too, really. O koe tau mai ki te wā mō te ngā kauhari me te hā, hākari, ngāri, mēna koe te hia i ka, we'll start that again, ngāri, mēna koe i te hia hia ki te whakaheke mōmona i te wā o te raumati, mātaki mai ki tēnei kaupapa a ngā huia wai te, me tētahi kaita, a ko tahi manu tau, te, te tāwhito. Mai e te tupo, mai e te taita, mai e te kauhi o ngā riki, mai e te tāwhiu ki ngā tui tāgina, tāgina, te māori, ko te māori a huna, mai ki rungi kui nei taura, ki rungi kui nei taura. Searching for guidance, the old-fashioned way. Tā reo ki te rangi, uhi, wero, tau mai te māori o haumi e, hui e, i tāi ki e. Fu! Fu! I never thought I was a kai, but... Um, I was around about, I think it was 142 kgs back then, yeah. And what are you now? I uh, average 108. Two years ago, Paura was desperate, unfit, unhealthy and in a bad space. I was kind of in that point of my life where I was questioning the meaning of life, uh, what my contribution to the world, to the universe was. and. I was just fed up with a whole lot of things that were going on in life. There was things that were inhibiting me and I had no clarity around what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go. I knew I had a lot more to give in, in life and, and especially back to, to Te Arawa, back to my, my tribe, my iwi, Ngāti Rangi Wilhi. I came to a point where I was questioning myself and my worth here. And uh, it took me into sitting under the stars for around about 10 days. So I sat there uh, every night for 10 nights and then I'd sleep during the day. It was on the seventh night that I had a visit from my queer. She came in just in a, in a vision, in a vision to me. Grew up with her. She spoke about kai and demonstrated that through her manaakitanga and people coming in and cooking kai for the whole whānau and things like that. So I learned uh, much about Kai being around her and, and, and just learning off her. Also gave me the whakaro around returning back to uh, Tupuna Kai. So with a bit of help from Nanny and a diet from 1,000 years ago, he turned over a new leaf. I really wanted to have a, a diet or a list of Kai that would support a modern lifestyle as well. It's quite easy to live off the whenua and the ngahere and the, the, the waters, the ocean and, and things like that, if you have that access. The diet or any practice of our old people ensured that we were at the top of any race physically, health-wise, fitness, uh, when, when the Europeans first came here and they defined us as that. The vegetables that I eat, uh, um, taro, kumara, yams, uh, puha, indigenous or native type of spinach, and pickle pickle are the main things that I eat in my diet. Uh, fruits is coconut and banana. Why coconut? From, it was bought with uh, the Te Rawa Waka, and uh, so, and it's an accessible, it's accessible in the uh, supermarkets as well. Kobe. Yeah. Yeah, kai moana and bird life. So uh, any bird that I can get that's legal, <laughs> that's accessible, that's legal, that is, is native to the area. My kids, um, my tamariki, they, they follow me generally in what I do, they'll follow me in what I do. So if I'm in, in the ngahere there, in the ngahere, if I'm out on the water and they can get out on the water, they're out on the water. Um, if I eat certain kai, they'll eat it as well. Hop out of the way. Come over here. I took a look at the harvesting practices of our tūpuna and how that would determine what you would eat and when you would eat. And uh, across the moon and moving with the moon cycle itself. So there's, you know, waxing and waning periods of the moon where energy levels are high or energy levels may not be so high. So there's periods like at Akonui or the full moon where Hatupuna would suggest to um, increase your kai 
and increase your, your involvement with koi, but also increase your output. So high intake of koi, high output of energy. And then there's other areas where uh, you're coming, the moon's coming down to a, a dark moon or to the later stages in Ōmutu, where uh, the time is good for, not, not good for very much. So you wouldn't eat. In fact, you would probably fast during that time. So there's a couple of fasting periods through that cycle as well. So low physical activity, no intake of kai, uh, but increase your, your thinking or your contemplation. Do you feel any sense of loss for the kai that you, or the alcohol or whatever, that you can't engage in? <laughs> um, oh, there's some of those things sometimes that you, you know, you as Māori you really like, so... You know, a dietitian would tell you not to eat the fat off the meat, except when it's on a barbecue and it's sizzling and you smell it when you walk past. You know, that's pretty cool when you want to eat that. Um, but not really. Not really. As I said, um, I engage in kai not for what the kai is, but for the reason and the philosophy and the purpose behind what it represents in terms of atua. Well, next week we start our special summer series and we're beginning with a personal and inspirational story with actor Cliff Curtis. The very private star opens up to reveal past experiences he could turn into a Hollywood movie. As he was like making him sit Cliff Curtis has an impressive family, movie portfolio. I talked to him. I told him I was picking up my son. Hey, low four, you better work out, you puny man. You agree to have my book published? That goes without saying. You have my words. I don't even know how that accent was going because it was very strange to be talking this way. If you know what I mean. Oh! Fuck, dog. You want to arrest, bitch? His name was Smiley, that's right. You know, Liza Tripke. Liza Tripke, you know. He's Dale. He's a Tresse. You know what I'm saying, Holmes? Yeah. You know why. Mi hombres, mi hombro, mi hombres, mi hermanas, mi hermanos. Istali, yo soy trece. La vida loca, que no. So that's that one. He can use his acting skills to impersonate his own reality. Robert Le Bruce was my agent for many years, Miss him daily. And he was great for negotiating because he had one, one word that he'd use for negotiations, and it was no. <laughs> and then I have my stock standard American accent, which I can throw up, you know, for any meetings or anything like that. It's like, hey, dude, what's going on? You know, just like roll with the guys. But beneath the Hollywood pretense is a very personal story. Uh, Dad, he was a character. He sort of, you know, he tried his best to raise his kids and that was uh, you know that was uh, that was that was tough you know it was very tough on him and uh, you know he didn't take it really well at all and it was just really tough on all he was very tough on all of us you know a bit of a once we're warrior scene going on there for most of our upbringing yeah it's a really revealing and rare interview with uh, Cliff Curtis well, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Wakahuya and the inspiring story of Te Pua Waitanga Mātene, who came from the School of Hard Knocks to become an inspiring teacher. Nō reira e taumā ngā mihi nui a tai ori ori ki a koutou katoa ki a mai tērā. Hey, Paul.